Hey everybody, Doug Reynolds here, your Sacramento area realtor. We're one month into the coronavirus stuff here and fortunate enough, I got Ryan Lundquist on the video with me today. He's a really well-known appraiser in the Sacramento area, but he also just does tons of stats and data and everything. So thanks for joining me, Ryan. Hey, I'm honored to be here. Looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, you and I go back pretty far. Actually, I was looking at some old YouTube videos 10, 11 years ago. I've been I've been begging you to join me with videos over the last decade, actually. So uh, <laughs> thanks. Didn't, didn't think it would be under these terms ever, but kind of yeah. quarantine here. But uh, there's one no video we did uh, back in the day. And I'm, uh, yeah, I may or may not been quite a bit thinner and had less gray hair. So you uh, have the go, the go I had a goatee. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. it's all it's all gray, so I can't do that anymore. And it's not the 90s anymore. So sorry, no offense to anyone who has a goat right now. <laughs> all right, well, I'll throw Ryan's information up on the video after I edit this. Um, but yeah, sacramentoappraisalblog.com, right? Yep, absolutely. Right. Go there, awesome videos, great stuff. He does weekly, really good information for both buyers and sellers and real estate agents like myself in the Sacramento area. So I think we're gonna get good insight from Ryan today. So first, number one, most important question, do you have enough toilet paper right now? Uh, absolutely. We thankfully do. So we are well stocked and um, hasn't been an issue. And obviously, if neighbors need some, they, they know where to come. I sent an email to neighbors. But yeah, we're. I hope, are you similar, Doug? Or? I'm good. No, we're good. Might be a little too much information, but not even planning this we installed a bidet actually back in like february oh, and so man. that helps limit to the um limit the toilet paper usage you know what? i have some friends that say once you bidet you won't go back and yeah. it sounds i don't that does not sound fun but i i hear that they they swear by it it just takes one trip to europe to try it out and you you just realize that it's way better actually so all right way too much information wasn't planning on sharing that but Thanks, Doug. All right. <laughs> so what would you say is maybe one or two key stats that you're really honing in on? I know you're doing tons of stuff, watching all kinds of things, but maybe just one or two that you're really kind of is piquing your interest during this coronavirus stuff that's going on with real estate market. Absolutely. Well, I think most notably, we're seeing a difference in new listings coming to the market. And so this week, this past week, the second week of April, there were 33% less new listings compared to a few weeks ago. Or from statistically, if we compare this second week of April with last year, you know, listings, new listings are down about 40%. And, and so it's been really noticeable that there's less listings coming, even though, you know, this past week we had almost 500 new listings in the region. And so it's not like they're not coming. It's just, there's a lot less than there were then. And, and also I would say probably the most significant stat in the region is that there's less pending contracts. And so despite there being, you know, over 330 last week, you know, or 350 last week, you know, there's, they're down about 40% from where they were um, one month ago. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I've been watching is, yeah. So that's giving you context on those numbers. You're looking at them year over year and you're seeing, wow, drastically we have way less than this time last year. So that's showing kind of how this is affecting the market. One thing I've been watching, and I'd love to get your take on this is watching what's going on with respect to the actives on the market, like how many we have compared to the pendings that we have. And to me, if they can kind of follow each other, maybe, yeah, the, the actives are down and the pendings are both down, then that's showing, okay, this is kind of affecting it sort of across the board. But what concern that I have that I'm reason I'm watching this is if the actives just shoot up and our pendings shoot down and they're kind of inverse of each other, then that's a little bit, would be a little bit more concerning uh, and I'm not, I personally am not seeing that right now, but that was kind of one of my first reactions a month ago was like, oh my gosh, everything's going to go up. Sales are going to stop. Everything's going to come to a screeching halt. You know, yeah. what would be kind of your take on that? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm really watching that too. I think you're watching the right things. I'm watching, I'm re just referring to it as a gap. And so if you see your, your listings up here and then your pendings, and then if that gap widens, um, yes. you know, clearly then the market softens, but 
I think one of the reasons why the gap hasn't widened as much is because we have literally um, a little bit more than a thousand properties that have gone on hold status or canceled. And so if these properties were still on the market, you know, you'd see your listing activity way up here and then your pendings way down yeah. here. But, you know, we basically have a thousand less properties that are on the market right now because p sellers have taken them off, canceled, or they're, you know, sort of waiting until they see what the market does and, you know, when it's safe, you know, when sheltering in place is over. And so I think that's kind of contributed to the factor for maybe it's felt a little bit more balanced or a lot more than it would, you know, had, had you, these properties still been active. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a great way to describe it. The gap between the actives and the pendings. That's definitely something that I've been watching and keeping an eye on. You know, we can't control it, but we can see what's happening with it to get a good feel for, for what is occurring in the market. Um, so what is maybe a, something that's surprised you in real estate over this last month that you've seen? Anything that's kind of caught your eye? Like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that a month ago when shelter in place happen and everything is there something that's kind of surprised you or caught your attention gosh i i don't know about surprise i'm just fascinated all around and and i know that it almost sounds callous to say just because this pandemic is is awful i mean it, just the stats are shocking especially out of new york and i mean our i know our stats have been increasing and so it's awful i think from a data perspective, it's, it's fascinating. And so I'm divorcing those two things. And, and, and so I would just say the whole thing has been really interesting. Um, one thing that has been intriguing is to consider what we're seeing in the Sacramento market is actually being mirrored in a lot of markets across the country. And so I'm talking with the colleagues specifically in Seattle and Portland and, and, and other markets across the U S where we've simultaneously seen this dip in listings, you know, more properties on hold, more properties canceled, less pending contracts. And so even though the real estate market is hyper local, you know, you see this, these elements that are occurring, you know, across the country, not that it's the same everywhere or even the same in every price range, of course, but I think that's really fascinating to consider. So what about, I mean, you, has there been anything that's really stood out to you that, you know, sort of made you go, wow, didn't expect that. You know, I think thinking back a month ago after kind of the initial shock of everything of just, whoa, you know, NBA, NHL just canceled and then everything else just kind of the dominoes falling after that and going, whoa, what in the world just happened? And then kind of going, okay, me personally, how is this going to affect me, my family, my life, my career, that kind of stuff. And I thought, man, I'm just going to have no business for the foreseeable future here. I thought everything would just stop. And what I'm surprised at is that I've got three escrows in since that day, yeah. all with buyers. And two out of those three had multiple offers on them. We're talking four of them, four offers on one, five offers on the other. So I think what's been the most surprising to me has been the percentage of pendings that have multiple offers on them still since then. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm seeing hovering, depends on what you're looking at, around 40% of the pendings are having multiple offers on them. It's kind of roughly the rounded yeah, number. Definitely. Yeah, you're completely wrong. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I, I ran stats since actually the lockdown when the other day, I, about three days ago, I pulled fresh stats and then 43% of, of properties since March 20th have multiple offers. Now, I will say that, I think that surprised a lot of people. It's down from where the market was at 53% in, in February um, or March sales technically show 53%. And so I'd say that there's 20% less, you know, pending more multiple offers in today's market, but 43% is I think really strong considering we're in a pandemic right now. And so it just shows that, you know, the market doesn't come to a complete stop. Um, you know, it's still happening and it's just, it's been a very crazy season to, I, I think, watch all this. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it just 43% of deals of, of escrows going in and multiple offers. It's just really surprising to me, but I think it shows the fact that the market is just not coming to a standstill. Things are still moving forward. Yes. When you compare it to where we were at a few months ago or to this time last year, it is substantially slower and less. But when you take in everything into to consideration just over this last month and see, whoa, things are still moving forward, that, you know, it, it's a little bit of a silver lining to me, at least, I think. Um, there's still people that 
job relocation. It's happening still. They've got to sell. They've got to move. Uh, divorces are still happening. Death is still occurring as far as, you know, grandma passed away. We got to sell her house. You know, there's various reasons why not everything is coming to a standstill. And so stuff is still moving along and there's still a number of buyers out there. I've got a lot of buyers that are just saying, my job is stable right now. I'm going to be wise. We're not going to be, you know, wild and, you know, we're going to follow the protocols and the guidelines and everything, but it's the right time for us to buy right now. There's a little bit less buyer competition right now. And so I'm going to just keep moving forward because I've got my down payment. I've got a steady job and I'm going to be looking for a house that I like to buy. No, absolutely. With buyers absolutely. Like that. Yeah. And I, I just got off the phone with someone today who wants to buy an ESAC and, you know, she just called needing some advice. And, and I think that in a sense, it, I get the calls that, you know, you get all the time, you know, with buyers, you know, thinking, what's this market going to be like? And frankly, I, I just think that there's more hesitation among buyers today that there's no escaping it. I mean, some buyers have pumped the brakes. They're just waiting and they're going to wait and see. And there's no talking to anyone to any, any, any excuse me, talking anyone into anything today. It's just some people are going to be feel comfortable and some people aren't. But my sense is that, you know, the market isn't always good or it's not always bad. And and I think I walk people through that and I'm like, like this buyer, I said, look, I mean, there's no guarantee about the future. You know, I don't have a crystal ball as much as people come out to me, you know, every day and saying, what's going to happen in the future? I go, look, here are the most exhaustive stats, I think, in the region that, that anyone's putting together. And here's my honest take for the market. Here are the red flags that I see. But at the end of the day, I, I don't have a crystal ball that actually works. And so you have to be comfortable with the mortgage payment. And if values do go down, then you have to be comfortable with that. There, there's no, and, and if your lifestyle mandates a move, then you're just going to have to move, right? If the market goes down, eventually you're going to lose no matter what home you're in. And the question becomes, where do you want to lose? Okay. And so I think these are honest questions. I find that I'm having these, you know, conversations that, that are so upfront, you know, with, with so many people. And these are questions that, that people are asking and, or buyers, you know, reaching out to me saying, Hey, I'm in contract, but I just feel uncertain. And, and so we're in a weird spot where you see, you know, 40% less pending contracts. Clearly a lot of buyers have pumped the brakes, but I think it's a reminder that, you know, 60% of the market was, was still moving forward in that regard. And, and so, um, is this this market today isn't for everyone, but it is for some people clearly. And, and so I think that's one of my takeaways here. And, you know, no sugar coating, you know, no pressure on anyone to do make any real estate decisions. But clearly p people still need to make decisions about life and they're still moving. And, you know, and when this is all over, I think we're going to sort of have to wake up and see what what's the market like. You know, there's a lot of ideas for what it could be like, but you know, we'll, we'll see what it is and then, you know, get to really measure it. That's going to be really interesting. Yeah. So changing focus a little bit instead of just stats and data and stuff, let's go a little bit more on the appraisal side. How is this affecting you as your profession, as an appraiser? What adjustments have you been having to make in the last month? Yeah, no, it's been wild. Um, I'm definitely not going in properties anymore. Um, I'll say that some colleagues are still doing full interior inspections. I'm, I'm not one of those people. I, I don't feel like it's wise. Um, I don't feel like it's safe. Um, and I think that if a lender were to ask me, you know, hey, we need a full appraisal for this cash out refi. Um, they're still asking appraisers to do that. I, I would just simply say, I'm not your guy, you know. No, there's nothing wrong with saying no in life. And that's one of the big takeaways here. And when someone puts pressure on an appraiser, I would just tell colleagues like, look, if you feel like you're not safe, then say no, turn down the business and eventually you'll have more or you'll find better clients who are not going to ask you to compromise your health. So you might pick up that I feel a little strongly about this, but I really care about my colleagues. And so I would say that the lenders on paper, they're saying, hey, appraisers, we want you to focus on more desktop products. We want you to um, to maybe um, do a, a drive-by appraisal, an exterior only, but then call the owner and get some photos, or do some do FaceTime, or use the Google Duo app, and you know get video of the inside. And so it's kind of a unique um, time. Uh, an appraiser colleague. Um, dubs that as a curbside appraisal, so to speak, where you, you're doing the appraisal from the curb, but yeah. you're getting more, you know, on the inside. And, and so um, I've been doing that a lot for all my private appraisals. And 
You know, I've just found that it's really, it's an odd time where I'm having a lot of extra communication with clients, having to, you know, sort of talk, talk to people about, I'm not going in homes. Here's what the procedure would look like. And then, you know, someone just ordered some appraisals today. And then I'm going to call each one of those tenants and have to talk to them. You know, here's what I want to see happen when I, you know, get to the property and here's the app. And, um, you know, so it's, it's been an intriguing time. Um, my sense though is that lenders are, are still asking for that full appraisal. They prefer that. Whether we'll see that in mass or not coming down the pipes, I mean, you know, who knows if it'll actually translate. But I, I do have a lot of colleagues that are starting to do more desktop, so so okay. things have changed. So kind of like the market a little bit then. There are some buyers that are still, hey, I'm moving forward. There's still some appraisers that are saying, sure, I'll go inside, but some others also stepping back. And so yourself included with that, you're kind of swapping to more of a virtual solution for that as far as interaction with the person that is actually inside the house and kind of doing photos and videos and things like that inside for you so that you can piece that together using you working together yeah no definitely i mean it's it's sort of one of those things when when things change in life or when a market changes we have to adapt and i think that if we keep doing the same thing and expecting you know the same results it just it, it doesn't make sense to me to not adapt during a pandemic. You know, we can't do things the same because we're, we have to think about germs, you know, science actually exists, right? It's something very real, you know? And so I, to me, it just makes sense to adapt my business, you know, temporarily. And, you know, the truth is, is that the courts are, you know, really shut down right now anyway. And so some of my work for that, for divorce and such, I mean, it's just not moving forward anyway. And so, um, kind of a weird time. Um, at first, I was like you, though, and I wondered the first week when I decided that, okay, I'm not going on homes. And this was, you know, four weeks ago, um, maybe slightly more. I had a really slow week. And it reminded me of um, the housing crash. And I remember waking up going, oh, my, like, what? what am I going to sell around the house, you know, so I can make ends meet? And I, I wasn't, you know, looking around. I didn't put, post anything on Craigslist. But I had that same feeling and I thought, you know, for a long time, it's been years, I've been so busy and I would say successful. I haven't had that feeling in a long time, but that one week, I feel like it was a test and it almost tested my, I think my faith too. And I'm like, man, uh, wild. But then, you know, since then, I, I mean, it's been an incredible whirlwind. <laughs> and so I've been so, so busy and, I, and I'm really grateful for that. But it, it's, I don't know, for me, it just gives me a lot of perspective where it's not even about data, but I'm looking at this and it's it's about life. Um, you know, um, do I really have hope? Do I really have trust? Like all these things, like, I feel like a lot of deep stuff is happening, you know, inside of me where um, I'm, uh, it's really changing my outlook and forcing me to, to do so. And so um, I don't meant to mean to get, you know, all like that in this conversation, but I just, I feel like I, I'm looking at this market and I'm crunching data like never before. It has been an insane journey. I can't believe the stuff that I get to put out there and the conversations I get to have, but like more, it's like, I want to, I want to leave this thing, you know, um, the visionary in me, I want to leave this thing at, as a changed person also, you know, I, I don't want to just leave with some neat little stats and, you know, some ideas about business and, you know, or conversations like this about the market, they're really essential, but man, I mean, there has to be more than just like letting life implode around us or the economy or the job market, the 16 million people that are, you know, have filed for unemployment in the United States. I, I just feel like, um, you know, there's more. And I just hope hopefully through whatever storm is ahead that, you know, we're able to sort of ride that wave, so to speak, to give a surfing analogy for you, Doug. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think, I think most of the world is going through that, you know, so Thank you. I revealed my bidet to you and you revealed our soul to us today. Yeah, Thank there you. we go. <laughs> All right. Well, I've known you long enough to know that you, no matter how hard anyone tries, do not give predictions. You just won't do it. Uh, and I think people approach you almost every single day asking for your predictions. And so I'm not going to ask you to do that, but I'm going to give a little bit of what kind of my gut take is and obviously this is a guess there's so we don't know and, yeah. and i i lean more towards you on we don't know i'm going to follow the data follow the stats but at the same time my mind is still moving of course of course i mean going into this conversation so much was the housing crisis the housing crisis i mean you couldn't get away from hearing about the housing shortage crisis that we had yeah you know? 
and everything has shifted now as to we're focusing on the coronavirus right now, sheltering in place, all that and everything. Well, if this can, we can return back to, you know, somewhat of a normalcy, we're, you know, we're shooting this kind of the beginning, middle of April right now. I mean, we're talking May, sometime in May, you know, we get back to work, get going again, doing stuff. I think there's going to be a pretty strong pent up demand that's going to kind of jump into the market if we can get going back to normal sooner rather than later. Obviously, if this drags on through the summer and all that, that is a whole new story and everything. But I really have got a gut feeling that, you know, I think if we can keep this shortened, get back to work, people can get back to their jobs, get things going again, I think there's going to be some pent up demand that things are going to be moving quick. I know for me, myself, I am honing in my systems right now. I am improving my system so I am ready because I have a feeling I'm going to be cramming eight, what is normally eight months worth of a, of a market of a bunch of work yeah. into five months and yeah. trying to do that same amount of work into a shortened period of time to fit it in before we hit Thanksgiving and Christmas and bad weather and everything. So I'm not, I'm making the prediction for you. What is your take on that? <laughs> so, okay, so I'm, I'm not naive to some of the big issues right now. Um, what I tend to do is I, I look at the market very objectively and I think sometimes people confuse my objectivity with um, maybe being ultra positive or having a very positive outlook on housing. And so, um, I'm looking at some of the bigger issues right now with what happens with the job market. We don't know yet what, how that's going to be expressed locally, how many people are out of jobs. We don't know what price ranges that's going to affect most. Um, we don't really know about confidence, you know, people, you know, whether they're really willing to buy. And so do they want to buy? I think they do, but will they? I mean, that that's a question I think that's unanswerable for now because we don't really know what the market's going to wake up and, and be like in a few months from now, you know, presumably when, when this pandemic is hopefully over by then. So hopefully two months, fingers crossed about that. So, um, but I think also there's a real mess with mortgage lenders right now and with everything going on in the secondary market. And I think we have to simply, you know, walk through that and, and see how that plays out. Um, now, Doug, I know that there's a lot of doom and gloom articles and I'm really careful about preaching those because I think people lose credibility when they embrace the flavor of the week and then they're posting all these articles and then that stuff doesn't end up happening. And so when the LA times, you know, had an article a couple of weeks ago about the potential for 15 million defaults, you know, that's very substantial and it's nothing that, that we should ignore because this may very well be a reality, but at the same time, objectively, we don't know exactly how forbearance is going to play out and we don't know exactly, you know, what's going to happen with defaults. And, and, and so I'm objective thinking, all right, here are some potential red flags, but we don't know for certain how that's going to be expressed locally. And so um, long story short, I would say that, um, my safe prediction is that as long as this pandemic lasts, the market is poised to be subdued. And so we're seeing a tremendous, um, you know, buyers back off tremendously. And um, I think that we're going to continue to see that as long as there's uncertainty about health um, and the economy. And so I think that's sort of a no brainer uh, prediction 101 sort of thing. But um, it reminds me of uh, Josh Brown on Twitter. He's a Wall Street guy. And he said that, you know, no bottom to the stock market until the pandemic ends. And, and I, I feel like that that's kind of a safe thing to say in real estate where, you know, it, it's hard to see much breakthrough and action, you know, uh, until we work through, the, you know, the safety of everything. And so I know right now, you know, realtors can't be fully, you know, out there. There's not full access to real estate, but but I don't think it's just about access right now, why, why we were seeing numbers sloughing. I think a lot of people have frankly put on the brakes just to say, well, I need to figure out life. I need to figure out how this is going to go. And so, you know, that would be my safe prediction as far as what happens after that. Um, you know, I mean, there, there could be some pent up demand, but, but again, I mean, what type of market are people going to wake up to? I mean, that's, that's going to be the interesting part to gauge. And I, I wish I knew, you know, I would be a gazillionaire and I'd have my own island somewhere and I could retire right now or sell an ebook, right? But uh, um, but I, I don't have that, so. Yeah, 
no one no one no one knows i mean that's the true we all have our own gut feelings and everything i think you hit on it though important thing is not just buying into these crazy headlines you know that you do see they're very sensational a lot of stuff thrown yeah. out there so if, if i could say could i say something real quick though <laughs> um i don't know if you want this on your video or not but um but i i did see some interesting research i actually just put it on a youtube video yesterday and it, it analyzed um pandemics and prices it, it's so crazy from yeah. amsterdam and paris from yeah, the 1500s that. to the 1800s and it's fascinating that they even have data from you know those centuries but you know historically you would see a, a five percent price decline during a pandemic for for those markets and there's no recipe for what would happen in our market but i mean at some point you know could price declines happen of course of course but that's not the worst thing in the world you know there there are, you know, prices go up and down all the time in real estate. And so in some senses, I think a market like today, when things feel precarious for everyone, it just sort of confronts, I think, maybe the real estate community, the ultra positivism that just saying, you know, that markets aren't always like super, you know, unicorn, wonderful, rainbow feely, you know, they, they, you know, sometimes the stats aren't as glamorous, but, but then again, you know, buyers need the truth today. They need to just consider all the dynamics in the market and then they will either pull the trigger or they won't, you know, there's a market for everyone. And I just, I just feel like that's like the truth of it, you know, and, and people will look at the stock market the same, you know, some people when the market's declining stock market, they'll see opportunity. They'll say, I'm going to buy right now. And other people would say, I'm going to hold off. And some people will say, I really want to get in the market. And that's all they're going to say for many, many years. And they're never going to make a decision because they don't pull the trigger whether it's stocks or beanie babies or you know whatever whatever the issue is and so i think that this market confronts people and you know will help them make decisions or not but there, i think there's a lot of questions to ask absolutely and I, there's always questions whether there's a pandemic going on or not there's always questions there's always going to be reasons to hold off or to move forward or not it comes down to a personal decision as to, you know, what is my status as far as do I have down payment? Do I feel secure with my job? Is this where I want to be for a number of years? You know, I'm already living here. Do I want to be paying rent or do I want to be owning, you know, all those types of things. It always comes down to Definitely. it. It's just, there's a highlighter on it. There's a magnifying glass on it right yeah. now. Because it's on steroids. Questions on steroids. It yeah, it is. Everything that's yeah. going on. And I think you and I both know that there's no way to answer those questions until we're past it. And we can look back and see, okay, this is what ended up happening actually. And, you know, we had this much of an adjustment. It's not the end of the world if values decline a slight amount, a few percentage points or something or whatever at the end of all of this. Um, that's not a whole lot when you're talking about the great recession and we had, you know, what, 40 to 55% drop in value and things like that. 59% uh, in Sacramento County. Yeah. yeah. Depending yeah. on where you pull the numbers yeah. from. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that was a totally different ballpark where real estate was what led that to happen uh, yeah. in that. And right now, real estate's in a totally different area as far as its foundation and its footing. And um, people have been having down payments and people have equity in their homes right now with this point there's not as many homes available you know all that kind of stuff it's just a way different spot so i think anyone that's trying to just say oh gosh we're you know this is the same thing it's going to happen again or something there's just no way you can know that you've got to factor in all kinds of different things definitely With yeah and and if I could say to you is that I, I think that a market like this forces us to really find trustworthy voices and, you know, who am I going to believe and, and who is telling the numbers in such a way, you know, without the strings attached. And so I think that, you know, there's certain headlines that they're clearly about getting clicks, you know, or you click on something sensational, then you read it and go, okay, that's an idea, but there's really no data to back up that, that, you know, notion yet. And so I think that we have to decide to, okay, who are we going to listen to? And, and what does credibility look like? And, you know, and, and there's that, those, those people who, you know, tout themselves that they predicted the last market correction. And so I'm just waiting to see who stands up in six months from now. And then their internet video is going to say, Oh yeah, I predicted the coronavirus and here's exactly what was going to happen. And, and I go, okay, well, 
so far I'm not seeing anyone that said that, but you know, maybe a year or two from now you'll have your gurus come out and, you know, they're selling, you know, a home flipping kit seminar and, and, you know, banking on the idea that they were right. But, you know, I, I just, the irony is that right now while we're in the midst of that, I don't see many people who, who are really, you know, giving strong sp specific predictions. So I just say it comes back to the data. Look at the data. That's what we have. All we have is the present right now. Um, you know, we really can't predict, but, you know, but pay attention to the stats. Who, who's putting out reliable stuff? That's, that's what I tell of anyone, you know. Well, that's good stuff. Um, you're putting out tons of data. I'm trying on, on my end to be doing my own things as well to put out kind of from my point of view as a realtor and things. Um, so yeah, if, if you've watched this video, if you made it all the way to the end, uh, check out Ryan's blog, sacramentoappraisalblog.com. And he's got awesome stuff there you can check out as far as what's been going on and everything. He's sharing tons of graphs, all kinds of good data and everything that you can chew on and figure out for yourself as to how you want to you know, view those things. I'm going to continue to keep shooting my videos. I've done quite a few since coronavirus stuff happened. I'm kind of giving it from my perspective as a realtor, what, what I'm doing. I mean, I'm, I'm having showings with clients. We are being wise and I've got gloves and a mask and everything um, being safe and wise and intelligent. But at the same time, um, I'm open for business. It's a modified version of what it normally looks like, but I'm open for business. I'm taking calls and appointments with buyers and sellers. It's much different now than what it looked like a month or two months ago. Um, but yeah, I've been moving forward with clients. We are making modifications and we're making it work and we're making um, transactions happen. I've got a number of sellers. I'm getting them ready so that when they feel safe and comfortable, they're gonna throw their house on the market in the near future here. I think there's a lot of people kind of teed up that way and everything as well. So thanks for watching. Hey Ryan, I appreciate you so much. Thanks um, for all that you do for the Sacramento real estate community. And thanks for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I hope you continue to stay safe and hope to get to see you in person coming up soon here, buddy. Hey, no problem, man. Hey, you, uh, you enjoy that bidet, okay? <laughs> all right, Doc. All right, Ryan. Take care. Okay, take care. Okay, thanks. Bye.